Good morning, church. It's good to see you today. We want to open our Bibles to Proverbs. We're in Proverbs in June, and then the first two weeks of July, we had several special things, Independence Day celebration, and then the Lord's Supper. We want to open our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10. I think we have a subject today that we all need. I need it. So if I need it, guess what? You need it. Let's stand together. Proverbs chapter 10. You'll hear me speak today about the mouth, the tongue, the lips, uh, words. It all goes together here. Proverbs 10, 11, follow the scripture please. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. But violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Verses 18 through 21. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. May God bless his word and you may be seated. Our theme is traveling on the wise road, part five. And we pick up with the title today, The Door of Your Lips. The Door of Your Lips. Begin with a poem today entitled, The Tongue. It says, The boneless tongue, so small and weak, can crush and kill, declares the Greek. The tongue destroys a great horde, the Turk asserts, than does the sword. Horde is a pack or a mob. The tongue can speak a word whose speed, say the Chinese, outstrips the steed that is a mighty horse. From the Hebrew, the maxim sprung, thy feet should slip, but ne'er the tongue. The sacred writer, Holy Bible, crowns the whole who keeps the tongue, doth keep his soul. What about your tongue? Well, what about your lips? Young person? Young adult? Middle adult? Senior adult? How's your tongue? We hear the kids' song, Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes. Oh, what about a little mouth? Or a medium-sized mouth? And some have a real big mouth. What about that? Do we need to be careful? We can all argue that we need and agree that we need a clean mouth, not just physically, uh, but spiritually, that brings forth the words out of the heart of man. The Word of God teaches us of our sin, our need of a Savior. And I'll tell you one thing, it will change your tongue, your mouth. If you're really a Christian, you're, you're going to change somehow and some way down the road of life. And you're going to be careful with that little member of the body. Best mask to put on the screen, and I want you to repeat this with me. You ought to memorize it. I think I've given a little card out before. Psalm 141.3, are you ready? Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door 
of my lips. Now when he says watch, doesn't mean a watch on your wrist. It has nothing to do with time. It deals with your mouth, your tongue. So, be careful what flows from those door of the lips. First of all today, we talk about the door of our lips. We want to use our mouth that with life-giving words, not violence-provoking words. And if you want to just put a simple note here around Proverbs 10, 11, put the words life or death. You see the word life is already here. The mouth of a righteous is a well of life. So, well, let's look at that. The mouth of the righteous man is a well of life. Let me ask you first of all, are you a righteous person? Uh, that means simply, are you right just before God? Are you right with God? How do you get right with God? Oh, I think right. I do things that are right. No. You must be convicted of your sin by the Spirit of God. And He shows you of your need of a Savior. The only one, Jesus Christ, who can die and take care of your sins through His precious blood at the cross. That He was buried, rose again. And that you come to the place... That you truly believe. You trust Him. He makes you right. You don't make yourself right. I can't make you, yourself right. Anybody talking to you can't make you right. That's the work of God. So if Jesus is your Savior Lord, you're righteous before God, and it says here He will control your mouth, and He will make your mouth a will of life. Think of that. Change the picture of a well. You picture fountains more, uh, springs of water. If you're thirsty, you want good, cool, clean water, don't you? Something that refreshes the body, that quenches our deep body thirst. So it is as a godly, wise Christian, you want to refresh others as a well of life. You don't want to be at violence or death provoking with your words, do you? Let me ask you, are you giving life with your words? This past week on the radio I heard the true story of a pastor. He told about his dear friend, an oncology doctor. A few years back, the oncology works with cancer patients. And I'm sure that is a, a tremendous... Uh, heart-wrenching uh, work because he has to tell people you know, when they test for the cancer and the cancer is spread that he has maybe so many days to live. So he went into the room to the dear patient, the man that he'd known for a little while, and he said, Sir, I am so sorry. And it's like he was almost pleading uh, to encourage him and comfort him. He said, i got to tell you the truth. You have only 30 days to live. He said the next, this is a doctor, doctor speaking, the next thing that happened just floored him. I mean, he, he just couldn't believe it. The dear man just broke out with an expression of real joy. I mean, he's smiling. And the doctor was thinking, how in the world, what is this man talking, thinking about? I just told him he had 30 days to live. He said, oh, doctor, thank you. And I just want to thank God right now that I'm getting ready to go to my real home of heaven. I'm so tired down here. And, and, and then a most beautiful thing happened. The doctor got quiet and the patient became his doctor. And he told him beautiful words of life named Jesus Christ. What Jesus had done in his life and who Jesus really was and what he could do for him. And lo and behold, the doctor was saved. His life was changed. He came to real eternal life in Jesus. Friends, don't tell me you can't be a well of life when you speak. Notice verse 11 there. The end part. Violence covered the mouth of the wicked. You know, some people are so foolish in speaking. You and I have been foolish sometimes. We must agree. We should be sorry for that. We, we send words, 
people, some people are violent. They, they just shoot out pain and, and hurt and it causes great damage. It, it relates here, you know, to verse 6. If you'll go back to verse 6, we're still in Proverbs 10. Blessings are upon the head of the just, the righteous, but violence covereth the mouth, mouth of the wicked. Now, sometimes foolish people receive on their mouth what they deserve. And, and really, the offender's mouth is sometimes shut up with a fist. It's called a knuckle sandwich. You ever heard of that before? <laughs> Uh, some of you talk about these uh, the kids in school, you know, bullying. I'll tell you what to work on a bully, all right. If someone gives him one across the lips, sometimes it might wake him up, hadn't it? <laughs> in the heat of frustration, there comes anger and bitterness. Now, our tongue can send words like a gun. It fires shots. You can't take the gun shot back. And it hits and it causes great damage. Sometimes it's like an arrow from the, from the hunter's bow. It, it can't be taken back and it pierces the target. Sometimes it's been said that an unkind word can pierce like a sword and cut so deep that it takes 12 apologies to sew it up. James 3, you ought to read James chapter 3. We're not reading it today. Uh, but uh, you can do that. Make a note of James 3. He talks about how can a well, a spring, give forth good and bad water at the same time? How does fresh water and salt water come from the same place? Friends, it's not going to come from the same source. The same thing about the old tongue. It depends on the source, the person, the character, the heart of a person, what comes forth, you see, out of the mouth. The challenge is on the table now, so to speak. Are you going to seek the Lord and ask for wisdom to use your tongue wisely as a life giver or like a life taker? Is it going to be in your mouth words of life or words of death? You think about that, okay? Secondly, today, the door of our lips. We should speak words of love and forgiveness, not hate and strife. This is verse 12. Verse 12, Proverbs 10 and 12. Hatred stirreth up strifes. Well, again, we ask, are you foolish and unrighteous? Uh, there are, those people really like to stir up strife. Enjoy confusion. They like to start conflicts. Another person, another group, in families, in churches... The words of Scripture here says, stir up. It means to awaken. It means to arouse. It's like waiting at the corner to get a word to start trouble. You, you repeat what another said, and whether it's true or false. The best thing is not to bring it up at all. We see in marriage sometimes, a husband says, well, look, I'm just ticked off at you. You know what you said last week to me? I remember then the wife turns around and says, you know what you said last Christmas, six, seven months ago? I remember, and I won't let you forget it either. You see? Stirring up strife, bitterness. The, word we, the words we use and the way they're spoken carry a lot of weight. You know that, don't you? After attending a wedding, the man said to a neighbor, says, I don't think this marriage is going to last. The neighbor said, well, why not? Well, when the groom said, I do, the bride said, don't you use that tone of voice like that. <laughs> That's sad, isn't it? But notice verse 12. The love covereth all sins. What kind of love's in your heart today, friends? You're walking with Christ. He, he's, he puts righteous love in your heart. There are times when we want to say what we're thinking. It's, you know, it's on the tip of our tongue. The Holy Spirit for the Christian. Now, if you don't know Christ, Holy Spirit's not at work. 
The Holy Spirit says to me numbers of times, says, nip it in the what? Just like that. Stop it. You're thinking it. I was just in a store about a week ago, and this person said something to me, and I just, it just in a least split second, like the Spirit of God said, close it. Didn't say a word. When we act in God's love, you do all you can to keep peace. You want to strive to keep peace with others. We're not talking about peace at all costs. You're getting on a different level. We're not talking about peace with terrorism and these kind of things. I'm not speaking about that. We strive to keep peace with others. You don't bring up things that have happened in the past or issues that will create conflict. You want to resolve the matters promptly. Before they grow into this root of bitterness. Ephesians 4.26 Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Needs to take care of it quickly as possible. You don't let it build. Day after day, week after week, month after month. Hebrews 12.14-15 Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently lest any man fail by the grace of God. <coughs> Lest any root of bitterness, say that with me, any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. How's your heart of love? Let me describe, let me ask you to describe your life in two phrases right here. This is it today. It's going to describe your life and mine. Christ-centered, self-centered. You get that? There's, it's very simple, isn't it? It's one side or the other. Christ-centered or self-centered. It doesn't say we don't do things wrong as a Christ-centered person. I'm not saying that. But is your life focused on yourself in your ways? Or is it focused on Christ and His ways? If you truly love, you will forgive others when they wrong you. We want to strive for peace between others. One of the things God really hates, I want you to look in your Bible. Just go back a few chapters here. It's very important. I wanted to preach about this, the whole section. Seven things God hates. Proverbs 6, if you haven't read Proverbs 6, I asked you several weeks ago to read 5, 6, and 7 when we did about sexual relations concerns. But, but this is different. 16 through 19. And I'm not reading it all. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 tells you these seven things God hates. Now look at the last one. A false witness that speaketh lies. And here it is. He that soweth discord, strife, confusion, bitterness among the brethren. You can talk about families, church families, especially brothers and sisters in Christ. Are you a sower of discord and strife? Love. Covers all sins. The Bible says hatred will stir up strife. You don't want to do that. You don't want to be known as a troublemaker. See, love, we're talking about covering sin. Let's think of this today. This is really going to bless your life and it'll mean a lot to you, I believe. Listen carefully. Is everybody listening? Love will bury strife and confusion. It won't dig it up again. Ponder this. It came to me. We should have more funerals in our families, in the churches, in our workplace. Funerals for strife, bitterness, and unforgiveness. Then, by the grace and power of the God, through His Holy Spirit, we'll have a more Christ-like love being sent out. Amen? So, the next time you stir up hatred and bitterness into your mind and heart, you ask God to send His love so you can bury it and not dig it up again. 
Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, 5, don't be, do not behave it seemingly. He's talking about true love, describing love. Seeketh not her own, not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. James in chapter 5, verse 20, He which converteth a sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death and shall hide, cover the multitude of sins. 1 Peter 4, 8, have fervent charity. That's love covers a multitude of sins. What do you think about it? Hatred or love. Thirdly today, our mouths, the door of our lips, should reveal wisdom that leads to understanding. Wisdom to understanding. Foolishness leads to what? What does the sign say? Destruction. Well, look at verse 13. It's right in the scripture. Proverbs 10 now. We have Proverbs 10 right there. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. I want you to listen carefully. Don't misinterpret me. Do you have an understanding mind and heart? Can you discern between right and wrong? Now you, you say, well, Pastor, I'm a Christian. I've been a Christian many years of my life, and I grew up understanding what's right and wrong. Sure. Well, why don't a lot of people understand the difference in right and wrong? Well, where does your good judgment come from? Well, when you speak, if you understand that, then it should be wise. It comes from understanding. It, it, I think it really, you've got to know God. Fear God. Fear of the Lord. That's great reverence and humility and holiness before a God. That you take Him seriously. And He's real. And He loves you through His Son Jesus. Died, rose again. You turn from your sin. You don't stay in sin. A person says, I give my life to Jesus. I trust Him as my Savior. You turn from your sin. You want to follow Him as Lord. You ask for godly wisdom. That's where wisdom is found. You ask Him. He'll help you make right decisions. Let me ask you this. Do you desire to listen and learn from those who have God's wisdom? Or do you want to go to the halls of foolishness? Places of foolishness. Proverbs 14, 10, I mean... Proverbs 10 and verse 14 says, The wise lay up knowledge. Laying up is a picture of storing it, treasuring it. So you can, you can come and reach for it and it just comes to you through your mind and heart. If you treasure something, don't you value it very much? We got in our basement a little red wagon. And in that red wagon now sits a beautiful, most beautiful pink ball. Do I go down and play with that wagon and ball every day? No. But it's ready for some little one who comes along. That baby Jules, when she comes around, she says, outside, side, wagon, wagon, ball, ball. It's precious. It's for her. And I bring it up. But it's stored right now. Is kept. And that's the same way with the knowledge of God, wisdom of God. In the right time, when you need to share it, if you got it in you, and you've treasured it, it's special to you, then the Lord will bring it up. Look at verse 13. The rod for the back of him that is void of understanding. There's some people who do not desire to hear and speak words of wisdom. You may call it empty of understanding. I call it empty heads. You ever call anybody an empty head? Well, I don't, want, I don't advise you to go out and do that right to the person, but you think of that sometimes, don't we? Well, I might need a rod. Now, I, I knew about switches, uh, little limbs off of special bushes. I always can't figure out how in the world those bushes are just at the right place. At the right time. 
And my dear mother could really use it too. She just a wake up, do you see? It's a wake up charge. You don't listen and obey. Disobedience. You learn very fast. Now, I want you to understand what I said a minute ago. Don't misuse my picture here about the rod. We're not talking of child abuse, any kind of abuse of children. I'm not speaking of that. You misuse the scripture when you do that. That's disobedience to God when you hurt somebody. Well, the story of the old farmer and the mule, he pulled at the leather reins, those who remember about the mules years ago. And he just dug his hooves into that soft earth and the dirt. The farmer, he spoke kind words to him. Please get up, you know, pop the rain some. Well, he wouldn't budge. He said, all right. Frustrated, he pulled a branch from a hickory tree, stripped the bark off, fashioned a nice switch, and he swung back, and he laid it on the hind end of that mule. And guess what that mule did? He got up and moved real quickly. See, the mouth of the foolish is near destruction, it says in verse 14. It invites and causes trouble. Uh, this the word destruction can also be called ruin. It speaks of the closeness of a place or a relationship. Foolish cause destruction with their babbling. It's only a matter of when and where. Wherever there's destruction or ruin, a fool is sometimes nearby usually and will have caused it by something he or she said. I don't even remember over Mount City, the young couple had a small child and they were murdered. We found out later that it was because of a Facebook entry. They befriended one and then they said, well, we cut this off. Certain words were passed. Then a murder. How in the world would a person allow something like that? We, we get carried away, friends. We, the mouth of the foolish is full of destruction, ruin. It's a close relative of destruction. They go hand in hand. Where you find one, you'll find another. Number four. The door of our lips. A foolish mouth is what? Out of control. A wise mouth under control. Look at verse 19. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. Well, let's, let's paraphrase that. Keep running off at the mouth. You're going to get yourself in a pile of sin. Get yourself in trouble. Guard your lips. He that refrains his lips is wise. You guard them. Ask the Lord to help guard your lips. Be wise. Verse 18 kind of goes along with this. Verse 19 is kind of like a kind of connection. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, he that uttereth a slander is a fool. When you talk too much about others, you can usually be led into sin. Lips of fools babble and spout forth every bad thing possible about someone else. Seems to be no restraint, no regard for the truth. It's not good. The story of the hot-headed woman, she met the great preacher in the past named John Wesley. She said, my talent is to speak my mind. And he said, woman, God wouldn't care one bit if you'd bury that talent. It's a good picture right there. Bury it. Too many folks are just, they're out of control with their lips. The wise, godly person will strive to watch, that's guard, to hold on the words, refrain from speaking evil of others, weigh it carefully. Our Lord Jesus often sat and listened to people. Let all sides speak. Sometimes we reply with questions. His answers seem to be direct, short, to the point. You could trust Jesus to say what he meant, and mean what he said, and what was needed. Needed. 
I challenge you today to read through one of the Gospels this month. And watch Jesus as he speaks. The Bible says in James 1.19, very important concerning our speech. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. That's quick. Swift to hear. Slow to speak. Slow, S-L-O-W. Slow to wrath, anger. Are you a good listener? Think about why God gave you two ears. Did he give you two mouths? It's time to get our mouths under control by the Holy Spirit. Last of all, number five, the door of our lips should produce valuable words, not worthless. Verse 20, the tongue of the just is a choice silver. Friends, your speech carries a powerful value. Like choice silver, it's selected, it's pure, without any impurity. It's the finest quality. Today, silver is going uh, for bigger prices than some years past. A young seventh grader one day was given an assignment to share Patrick Henry's great historic speech. He had to do it before the PTA, his parents and other parents, you know, at the meeting. So he started the little statement. It was more than just that great statement we know. But he got to that great line. He said, give me puberty or give me death. That's not a valuable word. Uh, Puberty should have been liberty. And he missed it. I'm sure he was frightened, you see. Uh, Words are very valuable, you see. Likewise, our Lord wants our lips to be very rich and choice. See, the Lord's looking at our hearts, you know. Are we in tune with God? What's coming out of the wellspring of the heart is going to make a difference. How's your life with God today? Need prayer, the Word of God, and the Gospel, being a disciple. A faithful follower of Jesus and then helping someone else become a true disciple of Jesus. The heart of the wicked will produce a foolish tongue. Does it it mean it has no value? It's worthless. I've got a good statement I'd like for you to put in your memory bank today. It's not on screen. You just think about it. The tongue is controlled by the heart. What people say is the outflow of what they feel and intend in their hearts. So, when you speak, the door of the lips open. It's a real picture of your heart. And you think about that. So we bow humbly now in humble prayer for this invitation time. Heavenly Father, we've come to the the time when we need to search our heart. We've talked about the tongue, but really, we've talked different times as you've told us, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. God, I pray today that our heart is just righteous with you. And we've talked about Really knowing you, trusting you, believing you through your son Jesus. And I pray today if our heart is not right, that we'll surrender. We'll be convicted right now by the Holy Spirit to say, look, I know what's inside of you. I know it's not right. You need to clean up. And I'm here to help you. My son Jesus Christ, for those who need salvation, a new heart, a new life. My son Jesus came, he died for your sins. He took your sins upon himself. He arose again and he lives and he wants to live inside of you. Will you trust him? Will you surrender your life to him as Savior Lord? Then Father, today, some may need to come and speak the words, I want to be a part of this church family. I want to follow Jesus Christ through Skyline Heights. Be a part of this church and live for Christ.
Maybe Christians all over this congregation need to say, Lord, I know sometimes I don't speak right. I, I get carried away. I, I lose control of the door of my lips. I'm sorry. Cleanse my heart first. Cleanse my mind. Then help me to speak words of life for you. And we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You come, would you?